seed technology has been around for a long time and, and ag's probably the birthplace. Most seeds that gets put out in ag is going to have a treatment of some kind. But in our rangeland sector, most seeds are left untreated. We're here at Brigham Young University within the Great Basin region of the Western United States. Our lab is focused on improving rangeland seeding success, and we're working to do that by developing seed enhancement technologies. Probably one of our biggest limitations is just getting the plants out of the ground. That seed goes in the ground, and right away, it can be taken by predators coming in. And the longer a seed sits in the soil, the higher the chances those seeds can be impacted by pathogens. Over that winter period, some of those seeds, they may germinate too early. Now they're getting hit with freezing. Let's say you make it through that gauntlet, and it's springtime, you're ready to emerge from the soil. There's issues with seedlings germinating and not emerging because of soil physical crust. Now the ability to come up out of the soil can be limited, especially if we have low organic matter soils. Say that those soils were disturbed already. If it makes it through all that, there's a good chance that plant's just gonna stay there for 40 years or however long its, it's lifespan is. The cool thing about seed enhancement technologies is it addresses those limiting stages. Seed germination, seedling survival. With our seed coating, we're able to add active ingredients onto the seeds, such as plant hormones or fungicides. Another limitation is just getting these seeds out onto the landscape. Land managers, so there's a lot of species, they see value in them, but because of the physiology of the seed, it makes it difficult to plant. So we can build up the size of the seed such that you can no longer recognize there's a seed. This is just a spherical pellet. We're able to distribute it much more evenly. What we're about to do is pellet some penstemon seed. The seed is very small. If you are going to run a bunch of different sized seeds through a drill, they might separate in the box. If they're all close to the same size, then they'll be uniform and so they won't separate as much. And then as you plant them, they all go out more uniformly. So this is the penstemon after we treated it. This is now over 2,000 milliliters, whereas this is the volume we started out with. So it bulks up the seeds a lot. And here is the untreated penstemon seed. See, there's a big difference in the size of the seed. This will definitely flow better. It's more uniform. for our larger seeded species. We might add just enough material that we increase the density of the seed, but you can still see the shape of the seed. We call that an encrusting. These are seeds from winter fat. This is a half shrub native to Western North America. This seed here is straight off the plant. So you can see it's really, really fluffy. That fluffy texture of the fruits makes it so these seeds can't flow through rangeland seed drills, through broadcasters. So we can demonstrate that just like this. We put the fruit in our equipment, and as we try to plant it, that fluffy texture causes the fruits to bridge and it clogs it up. What we are working on with our research is applying these coatings. This coating is limestone based, powdered calcium carbonate with a hydrophobic coating on top of it. So those are the fruits after they've been coated, and these can flow through equipment much better than untreated fruit. Because this fruit is so hard to deal with, winter fat is often not even included in restoration projects because it's just impractical to use on a large scale. So by applying coatings, it's easier for managers to deal with. They can run it through their equipment, they can implement it into seed mixes, and they can be involved in more restoration projects. kind of been thinking, well, where have these plants evolved to get their nutrients? We collect leaves from areas where we're gonna plant and we compile all this native plant material together. We're adding compost on the seeds and keep the seeds protected from pathogens. Here's the acorns that we're actually gonna be coating today. And these are gonna be coated for mineland reclamation. 
So we're using them at disturbed sites, so we want to help restore oak and the natural stands that are there typically. Here we have the actual coating that goes onto the seed. This is a mix of compost and azimuth. We want to look at the compost after we finished making it so we know what organisms are present and everything and before we apply it. These native plants will grow alongside native microorganisms. So as we're using native plants in the composting process, they're bringing the native microorganisms along with them. By getting more fungi, more predators like protozoa or nematodes present, you can increase the chance and really set the stage for the plants you want to grow to be successful. We also have species that have dormancy mechanisms built in that is great for the long-term survival of that plant. Plants are adapted to sense their environment and seeds are no exception. They are mainly sensing temperature, moisture, and light conditions and they have different mechanisms to do that. But now our system's changed where that evolutionary strategy may not work well, say in a cheatgrass environment, in particular when we're trying to get those plants established all at once. And our challenge in restoration is that we want to get a lot of plants established quickly. Um, and so for us, it's really important to know what those mechanisms are that break dormancy in a plant and allow it to germinate. Seeds absorbing water is the first step in the germination process. So for physically dormant species, you might have methods for what we call scarify the seed coat, so scratch it to allow water to enter. Germination doesn't happen until that seed coat is broken. So this is a scarifier here where we put seeds inside a chamber. So those blades are going to turn that seed around. And as that goes around, it's going to wear down the seed coat on the sandpaper. One, two, three, four. So here's untreated seed. And then here's our scarified seed. Lighter color as those seed coat was nicked. So now this species is more likely to, to germinate uh, this coming spring if we were to plant it in the fall. One of the things that we've started to think about is maybe not treating the whole seed lot, but some of them, so that some of those species are going to germinate early, some are going to germinate as they regularly will, and some will germinate late. So we increase the odds that something's going to germinate during a favorable period. And we call that bet hedging. We're enhancing that bet hedging strategy the plant already has. It's not just a simple one treatment is going to be successful. So don't want to say we've got everything worked out, but little by little, I do feel like we're making headway.